Hey, I'm Jeff Curry. Uh, it's a uh, fall of the year, but you know the deal is the water's still pretty warm. And, and anybody, anybody around here that that that, that fishes, you know, generally this is a tough time of year to fish in these Oklahoma and Texas lakes. Um, you know the fish hadn't really moved up shallow yet; they're still kind of out suspended. So, gonna run around and try to catch some on our top water. Um, maybe you know that. What happens on this lake is a lot of the fish get out there in the middle of the lake in deep water and suspend on a little bait and may try to catch some, you know, some schoolers, uh, maybe catch some on a drop shot, dropping on them and, you know, maybe find some hydrilla late in the day and try to flip up a big one. But, um, you know, it's a tough time of year to fish, but, you know, the deal is they can be caught, but a lot of the fish are suspended. So, you know, at some point what I'll try to do is find all the bait out in the middle of the lake, crank my hydrowave way up and, and hopefully uh, get the bait, you know, around the boat, and they'll come up schooling. All right, you know, it's uh, it's early early fall, and the fish are, you know, pretty suspended. So, you know, one one of the really good ways to catch them on a lake, if you have any clarity, is is, is just vertically dropping on them. So, you know, what what I do, if you're not used to doing it, go slow. You know, that that's a big deal. Guys try to move around too fast, and I try to slide around the, the sides of these points, and I look at my Navionics and, and, and all that, and then, you know, when you're looking at your graph, really, the biggest thing is, is all that matters is the right side over here. It's called your flasher bar. That's all that really matters. See, there's a fish right there. He doesn't look real active, but let's see. I'm gonna drop down to him. There goes my drop shot. Yep, see him? See him all? So I, I'm de definitely right now down in those fish. Let's see if we can get one of them to bite. They're really, really active. I've got my hydro wave up on, pretty high, so I'm pulling these fish out of that grass is, is the, the, big, the big key right now. One just went right back down to it. But if you look right there, see that right there? Well, one just came up at it. Let's see if he gets it. He's all over it. Got it. Now, if you look, while I'm fighting these fish, you see there's a whole bunch of fish out here just blew up with this fish. But one of the, big, the biggest keys on, on dropping on these fish is, to, is really to make sure they're moving. As long as they're moving, I feel like I can catch them. And you know, when they're just sitting still, they're really hard to catch. And that, that's, why, that's why I have my hydro wave up really high right now. Um, I, I just want them active. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time dropping on fish that are just, I call them flatliners. They, they're just sitting there. So, uh, and you know, when I caught that one, a whole bunch of them blew up. So uh, we know there's a bunch there. So I kind of got back up on top of it. Now I'm just going to slide around real easy right off that edge again. You can see I'm falling off now right there. See, there's that fish right there came up and then he peeked his head right back down in that grass. Let's see if we can get him to bite. So there goes my bait, just went down. And I mean, I don't really work my bait a whole lot. About, about, probably most of the time, they'll bite it when it's just, when you drop down to them and they see it. The best case scenario is when you're dropping and one's coming up to it. That's, that's what you want. There's a few right there. When, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm fishing this time of year, on these clear lakes, like a even like a table rock, or uh, you know, this is Lake Murray in Oklahoma. Um, any of these lakes like this, if you're fishing out for schoolers or wherever, you need to always have a drop shot ready. I always have one laying there, e even when I'm fishing a lake like Kentucky Lake or something like that, and I'm cranking offshore and all that. Um, when I see one on the graph, I'm gonna immediately reel him whatever I'm doing, and I'm gonna drop on him. There's one right there. See him go down for it? Let's see if he'll get it. There's a whole bunch. Look at there, he got it. You see him now, look at the graph right now. You see him all blown up right through there? There's a whole bunch of fish right in there.
He's small, but it, it's a great way to fill a limit. And when it's really tough, man, there's a lot of times you're forced to do this. There's been lots of tournaments when it's been my only option, you know. So you go out in the morning, you throw your top water and try for a big bite, and then when it gets flat and horrible, and then just pay attention and drop on them. But, okay, so, so remember now, now I'm kind of back off of the deal. So the trick is, until you get used to doing it, is to go slow. Because what happens is if you go real fast, you'll see the fish, but you'll blow past the fish and they're real hard to, to get back on. So as long as you just go slow, you're, you're, you're gonna be able to drop on. And I'd always just drop right to the right. Of, there's a bunch of fish right there. So I'm gonna drop it down. So I'm going down, I'm watching the graph. And now that I see where they are, you know, I'll stop it in them. If I have a fish coming up to it, I usually stop it right above him and let him go ahead and come and get it. But th these fish are pretty active right now. There's one right there looking at it. And if, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just shaking it right there. And every now and then I might come up real quick and then stop it just to try to get them to pull back up on it. it it's, you know, it's like sight fishing for one spawning, you know. You, but most of the time, just a real subtle deal. Just a little bitty shaking it real easy or even holding it on them. And the, the, the other thing that, that uh, you know, anytime I see more than one fish, I always feel like my odds go up. And then it becomes a, comp a competition deal with the fish. But I, I can't stress the importance uh, of finding fish that are moving. And that's right now, I have, my, I have my hydro wave up really high. I mean, way higher than I normally would. But what we do, we have some deep grass right here and I'm able to pull them up out of that grass and I can see them. So, you know, I like, I know there's a bunch of fish right over here. There's a fish right there. Let's see if we can catch him. So several, those ought to bite. See, they're moving pretty good. Let's see. And, and those fish are actually pretty, those fish weren't but about 15 foot. So now that I know where they are, I might be better off sliding off and just kind of pitching right through them. The other thing I would say is when, when you find these fish in these areas like this, you know, catch what you can catch, but they'll eventually, they'll get real hard to catch. I mean, they'll, you'll have, you'll drop on a bunch and they'll look at it and they won't get it. That's all right, man. Just drop your waypoint on it, leave and come back. I mean, m most of the time, if I feel like if I can catch, see, I pitched right back through there and I caught, caught fish. He wouldn't bite it when I dropped right on him, but that fish was pretty shallow. So I just pitched back through him. You know, that's how we catch a lot of those fish on, uh, boy, there's a good one right there underneath me, on, on the Great Lakes. Just a, just a little one, but, and you know, and I'm not claiming that this is the way to catch big ones. I, I'm not, but it's a dang sure way to fill a limit. And, and, and on some of these places, some of these lakes this time of year, just catching a limit is good.